Good morning. It is early and, um, well, depends on you're watching this, but for me it's early. I'm pardon the bedhead and I haven't had my coffee yet, so this might be a pretty unpredictable video. Um, today we were supposed to be going to Tammy's house to film the next segment of our Gardening from Scratch series. And we were going to be planting beans and putting together trellises, just like these teepees behind me. Um, but because of the whole staying at home social distancing thing, have you guys heard of that? We're not going to be doing that today. However, I have asked her to please send some updates. And so she is going to do that. Maybe uh, some video or some photos. And I will be posting those next week. I don't know if it'll be a, a specific. I don't know if it'll be Friday video. Probably not. I'll probably just have a bonus video next week um, of an update. So. You're stuck with me alone here today at home. Um, I hope that's okay. I did want to wake up early though for you guys, even though it's freezing cold outside. Um, I know that's relative. Don't yell at me, people in Northern climates. We're gonna be doing a few things on this video. We're gonna be doing number one, a garden tour. And then I'll probably run in and have some breakfast and some coffee. And then we're gonna come back out and I am gonna show you how to make these trellises, these TP trellises here. Um, there's a few materials you can use. <clears throat> I minor bamboo. And uh, so we'll do that. And then also a update on how the little baby chicks are doing. I'll take you in. They've actually changed a lot. It's been a week today since we've had them. And they're so cute. Um, so this garden tour is going to be probably a bit lengthy because I'm going to, even though the garden right now is literally almost at, a, at the end of the cool season, and there's not a lot of spectacular things going on. Uh, I'm going to update you on a lot of the projects, a lot of the things and the experiments that we've been doing here over the past few months, because I don't get a chance to do that a lot. And so I, I think you'll enjoy that. And I've also got some tips on some certain vegetables that I can kind of throw in there uh, during the tour. So because it will probably be a long tour, I'm going to put a digital table of contents down in the description. So if you're only interested in certain things, you can go down there, click on what you're interested in, and it'll jump to that part of the video. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll just get started with the tour. All right, so we're going to start over here in the least beautiful area. <laughs> this is going to be our container area. And I told you guys we're going to be growing a lot more things in containers. Um, and I'm going to be using these five-gallon Home Depot buckets as well because I know those are uh, available even online right now. And there's something that's easy, quick, inexpensive uh, to use. And we're going to be growing all kinds of things in these. Um, I've got a couple of these Smart Pots that we use, the Cali Kim, the big purple Smart Pots that we used last year on our kids series with her on her channel. And I'm actually going to be growing corn in these this year. So I think I've never grown corn in containers, but uh, I, I know it can be done. And I'm using these because they're wide and not so deep. And, you know, with corn, and we'll explain on that video, you need to plant a, a, a good group of them for pollination. So that's why I chose those. Uh, a little update on the blackberries. I did a video on that a few months ago. I'm widen out here. Um, and if you remember, I had let them go too long, and so I kind of had to do this uh, ad-lib type of pruning. Now over here, I did it correctly, and if I had done it right earlier, there would be more side branches. But I wanted to, you know, prune it the right way for this coming year. Um, go back and watch that video if you don't really know what I'm talking about. I'll put a link. On this side, I did not prune it perfectly because I wanted to leave a little bit more branches so I could have a little bit of fruit this year. I made a mistake and, you know, waited too long. And so I wanted to leave a little bit more than you should so I would get some fruit. And if you notice, we do have uh, some blooms in here. The little buds all over. So they look nice and healthy. So now backing up here, I've got the potatoes that are doing really well. Um, did a video a few weeks ago. What was that? A month or two? I don't know. Time flies so so fast. But I'll put a link to that. Growing uh, potatoes in containers. 
and it's about time to start adding soil. Um, it's going to be a little difficult because they're at different stages, but we, you add soil to potatoes because you don't want, well, for one thing, just like tomatoes, they're going to grow roots wherever their stems touch the soil. So as you add soil up, it's going to create more roots and we're going to fill this pot with potatoes. Also, the roots of these potatoes are right on the surface of the soil. And once the potatoes start expanding, they're going to be exposed to the sun. They're going to pop out the top of the soil. And uh, we don't want that because when they touch the sun or when the sun touches them, they turn green and become poisonous. So uh, we will be filling these in with soil as the weeks progress. All right, so this first bed here nearest the lawn is just about done. I pulled all the peas out. Um, I do have some new lettuces coming up in here that I need to clean up a little bit. And then we've got the last of the cabbages and kohlrabis, which do have some aphids on them. I've been spraying those off every couple of days. But this is starting to head up. This is a pointy, I think it's called Kylobus or something like that. It's from Baker Creek. Uh, got a kohlrabi here. You harvest these when they're about three inches in diameter. So that's got a little ways to go. But I did have sweet peas on these three trellises up until this last week. And I took them out, which will give these a little more sun. And then this was my striped lettuce bed of the red and green romaine. And the red started to bolt, so I took that out. Uh, so I'm left with the green. I do have a question. I, I'm not an avid daffodil grower. My idea, I've planted these daffodils in the fall really deep because I wanted them to naturalize in here and every spring you know, just come up and give a little bit of a flower show in between the vegetables. However, I'm getting issues like this. So if you guys have grown daffodils, let me know, please, what you think this is. The leaves are turning brown and dying before the plant blooms. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's hit or miss. See, over here I've got some. One, well, it's starting to brown too. But over here I've got this beautiful, two beautiful plants coming up with a bloom and then right next to it it's getting this problem um, I dug down to see if it was the root or the, the bulb rotting and the bulb actually looks completely fine it's it's firm so if you know what's going on there please let me know in the description uh, I'd appreciate that so in this bed I have uh, some kale planted and some collards uh, these are seedlings that I just put out a week or so ago. And then I've got some cool season or some uh, plants that didn't need to be grown under lights indoors. We've got uh, two, two types of chard, lemon balm, hyssop, which is great for attracting pollinators, catnip, and I've got my uh, globe onions here that I'm waiting to get big enough to transplant those into the garden. Down here, I've got my seedlings. I've got the tomatoes and the basil. And then the other ones that have made it through the, um, the caterpillar attack that was in the garage. Still don't know how that happened. I've never had that happen before. But I think these will make it. We've got some beggars here waiting for some food. Alright, so this is a natural introduction to my new bog garden. And if you follow me on Instagram, which you should, I had updates of me building this bog garden. Now, in nature, a bog garden, and I have the waterfalls turned off so it doesn't make you guys have to pee. Uh, that's why. So if you don't see and hear waterfalls, that's why. In nature, a bog is basically the soggy shoreline of a body of water. 
Now I have all edible plants in my bog. Starting right here, the front line is taro, uh, what the Hawaiians made poi out of the roots. So it's just getting started and it is actually, there's an invisible, the taro is actually in the pond. There's an invisible border right behind the taro. So the, the, the water actually feeds the taro with the fish waste. So it filters the water, feeds the taro, symbiotic relationship going on there, and the soil stays always saturated. Now with the bog back here, it is uh, in a liner, just like pond, except it's plastic because it doesn't matter if it leaks a little bit, but it does hold the water in. So the water stays, or the soil stays always very, very moist, almost wet. Um, so in the bog, I've got the taro, I've got canna lilies, which technically you can eat the roots. I won't be doing that. They're actually just really pretty. Um, right up here, I have watercress. So that's what those little baby seedlings are there. And then back in this bed, something I'm really, or this bog bed, I don't know what you call it, something I'm really excited about. These right here, these little sprouts that you see are actually water chestnuts. And I'm gonna run a little footage right here of me planting them. Basically, they're a tiny little, well, they're a water chestnut, if you've ever seen a water chestnut, except they've got some brown skin, which they don't normally have when they're canned. Uh, but little bulbs that love wet soil. And so that's what they've got here. Um, and they're actually, each one of these is gonna get about three feet tall and about two to three feet wide. So this whole area will be filled in with, they're actually a really pretty uh, plant. All right, now coming over on this side, this was my cauliflower and broccoli bed. The broccoli's long gone. The cauliflower, I've been harvesting some, but I still have a few left. Uh, let's take a look. If you watched my video on protecting your cauliflower from the sun, you know why this um, clothespin is on here. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, beautiful head. That's just about ready to harvest also. So uh, we've got a couple more down the way. Got some radishes here and some carrots. Nasturtiums that always come up wild. Got California poppies that come up every year wild. All right, so back to one of the experiments. I did a video back in November, I believe. This is the garlic. And if you remember, if you watched that video, I only planted this side fresh out of the package. Um, and you can see there's a difference between this side and this side. This side was put in, the, the, the garlic cloves were put into the, refri the refrigerator for six weeks because we don't get cold, cold winters here. And so the thought is putting them in the refrigerator mimics the winter and it lets them clove better. Now, we're not gonna know for a few months if they've cloved better, but you can see a difference. These are much more vigorous and green while these look a little bit more unhealthy, I guess. So we're gonna see. My thought is maybe these are putting more work into the below ground, into the bulbs and less into the leaves. I could be completely off on that, we'll see. Okay, this uh, hydroponic strawberry tower, not doing so well, actually. Um, I had started off with, you know, just using organic growing medium or whatever you wanna call it, feed. That was not working at all, so I switched to the synthetic just to see what would happen. It's working a little bit better, but still, it's been about three or four weeks since I did that, and, oh well, let's just look, that you compare it to this, which is the rain gutter method that we planted up a couple months ago. Loaded, 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 all the way down with strawberries and flowers and the plants are just doing so much better. And as you can see, if we back up here, the apples are filled in completely. 
and we've got little baby apples all over the place. Usually this produces many hundreds of apples just on these little trees tucked away in the next to the wall and I have to thin off about 200 every year. Um, the lemon tree is putting out new leaves all over the place and we've still got some lemons hanging on. And speaking of citrus, these orange trees are absolutely loaded with oranges and blooms for the next season's crop. While we're over here, since we are going to be starting our chicken videos, let's see, are they awake? Uh, of course they are. You don't beat the chickens up. Let's see if they have a treat for us. Yes, they do. I mean, literally, is there anything better than fresh eggs, fresh organic eggs right in your own backyard? And stick around. We're going to be showing you how to do that. So make sure you are subscribed. While we're over here with the chickens, uh, a little sad news. My banana tree, if you see, these bananas have not grown at all. So it's pretty much since I told you or since I showed this to you months ago. And I'm not exactly sure why. I have a couple of guesses. I think it's either because it bloomed in the winter and there just wasn't enough heat for it. Or I suspect because this whole area was a construction zone for about a third of its life, it ended up not getting as much water as it needed to get. I mean, it is definitely not as thick of a trunk as they usually have when they are producing. So I'm probably going to be ripping that out. I don't think those bananas are going to do anything at all. Just a wide shot of the garden in April, early April. Now over here, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw me making these gates. I still have to put a fence on both sides, but do you ever have that part of your garden that just you don't necessarily need everyone to look at? Wherever the, all the tools and the pots and you know junk basically piles up, that's what that is. So just working on a way to cover it up. So how about the herb garden? got lettuce coming up in here daffodils in there already did their thing we've got chives I love these chive chive blossoms and they're actually edible you can pick each little flower off throw them in a salad and they just give a nice little chive flavor with you know a little color got some spearmint cilantro a weed and these are cool daffodils. I like these. Um, they're coming to the end here as well. Now, one thing I do know about daffodils it, and all spring bulbs is that you want to take off the seed head or the flower once it dies because you don't want the flower to put energy into the seed. You want it to put it into the bulb for next year. You also leave all of these leaves here until they die back because all of this energy and nutrients are gonna be fed back down into the bulb for next year's blooms. So if you take off the leaves, you take off next year's blooms. All right, over here we've got oregano, um, rosemary that does not look like it's having a good time. Speaking of time, <laughs> time that's coming back. Parsley and peppermint. A couple weeks ago, Noah and I did a microgreen video, and here those are. Now, they've been actually on the patio, under the patio cover, so they don't get a ton of sun, but that's okay because they're ready to harvest. As you can see, I've already harvest, started harvesting this one. This is arugula, which turns out is my favorite. It uh, has a nice little zip, but it doesn't have a real, like, like this is kale and broccoli which is pretty and purple, but I don't like that. I do not like that. I do like the arugula the best. Alfalfa was also, that was my second choice. But it was a fun project and man, they grow so fast. So this is really good if you guys are um, looking at crops that are really quick to grow and highly nutritious, microgreens. Now this, this is the sweet potato from the video last, was it last week? I think a week ago. Uh, I brought it out here. It's been on our kitchen counter. 
but I wanted to bring it out here for better lighting. But as you can see, we have roots. These roots, and then when there's little starts all over the place. I'm looking for sprouts, but hey, it's only been a week, so I think I think we're doing good, and I think that vitamin C treatment may have sped up the process. Okay, so that wasn't bad, right? That wasn't long. I guess I'll know when I finally edit this. But I'm gonna take a quick break to go get some coffee. And then when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make these TP trellises. And also, to end the video, I'm gonna take you inside and show you um, the baby chicks and how much they've grown because in two weeks from Sunday, so today's Friday, so a week and a day on Self-Sufficient Sunday, which actually happens to be Easter Sunday, and that's appropriate, we're gonna be having our first chicken video and showing you how to get started with baby chicks, how to set them up properly, um, and how to care for them while they're growing into mature adults. So stick around, I'm gonna grab some coffee, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Had my coffee, had my breakfast, we're good to go. So there's only two materials that you need to construct these teepees. Um, one, you need some sort of support. Now I'm using bamboo because bamboo is free and plentiful where we live. Now I know bamboo, I think, grows in just about all 50 states and most climates throughout the world. There's more hardy kind, there's more tropical kind. Um, they're usually found near bodies of water, maybe a stream bed, lake. Uh, so that's where I got these last year. So they last, you know, two to three years. So you want five canes of bamboo per teepee. And you want them all to be relatively the same length. So we're going to have one cane straight up and down to be the middle, middle support for the teepee. Now, you want to use your strongest, sturdiest cane for that one. And we're going to put it right in the center of where you want it to be. Now, last year, my TPs were about two feet square. Uh, I'm going to make them a little smaller this year because they took up too much room more than they needed to. So I'm going to do about a foot and a half square. So I'm going to put this in the middle of where I think it should be. And try to push it in about eight inches at least. And then you want to just kind of calculate out what a foot and a half is going to be or however far you're going to do it. And you want to push it down in again as far as you can. So what you're going to have is uh, four posts around the edge, one in the middle, and they may or may not be meeting at the top right now, but that's what we're going to do next. So now you need a piece of wire or something strong enough to hold them together at the top. The first couple of years I would use twine, like that natural looking twine, and it didn't even last halfway through the summer and it rotted and the whole thing just kind of sprung open. So I've started using thin not too thin, but not as thick as the, the landscape staples I made with it. This is a thinner wire. So we're just going to go around the top a couple of times. And we're going to take the center one and then cross each one past the one next to it, kind of. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we're going to take it and... And we're going to twist it around itself. Now with some needle nose pliers, we're going to twist it and that's going to tighten the whole thing up. That's all there is to it. It's going to be sturdy and it's going to stand up to the elements for a year, two, maybe three, depending on your climate. Now, if it snows where you live, maybe bring them in in the winter, but I don't know, I've never dealt with that. So I'll leave that up to you.
So we brought the chickens outside to get a little bit of sun. We're having a nice sunny day, so I want them to be able to enjoy it for a few minutes before they got to get back under their heat lamp. But uh, so we've got, this is the little girl that was on the video the other day, I think. But look at the feathers already, the wing feathers we've got going on here. They grow so fast. It was literally a week ago. They're only nine days old. Hold that one. And this is a this is a white Plymouth rock. No, this is a white Plymouth rock, I think. This is, I think, a white leghorn, and they're interchangeable. We don't know which one's which. I think this is the Plymouth rock because they are a little bit sturdier and fluffier. And this one is sturdier and fluffier. Yeah. This is a speckled Sussex. And you can already see on her new feathers kind of the coloring she's going to have. Oh. Thank you for watching, guys. And be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and hit the post notification bell. And if you want to, you can follow my dad on Instagram. It'll be right up there for you guys and see you guys next time bye